Hello and thank you all for viewing. Today we are going to review the role of MRI in the assessment of acute appendicitis in pregnant patients. Our learning objectives are to review the role of MRI in evaluation of appendicitis in pregnancy, review MRI protocol recommendations, and review the MRI appearance of a normal and abnormal appendix in pregnant patients. The workup of clinically suspected appendicitis in the emergent setting will vary depending on the tools and modalities available at that time and in that particular facility. MRI abdomen and pelvis is designated as usually appropriate in the subgroup of pregnant women with right lower quadrant pain, fever, and leukocytosis by the ACR appropriateness criteria. Ultrasound is also in the usually appropriate category and in my experience is typically performed first as it's generally more readily available in the vast majority of emergency departments and has at least a chance of finding the appendix or some other etiology for the patient's symptoms. The clearest benefit of MRI and ultrasound over CT is the lack of ionizing radiation and the potential risk to the fetus. According to the appropriateness criteria, MRI, abdomen, and pelvis without IV contrast or ultrasound abdomen is the primary modality for interrogation of the pregnant patient with suspected appendicitis. However, the limitations of ultrasound for appendicitis are clear and the issue is non-visualization. When ultrasound is available and an abnormal appendix is found, the workup can stop. However, when the appendix is not visualized, which happens commonly, MRI can usually identify the appendix and make the diagnosis. A retrospective study compared appendix visualization with ultrasound versus MRI in pregnancy, and the appendix was only visualized in 7% of ultrasound. The sensitivity and specificity for acute appendicitis on ultrasound was 18% and 99% respectively, basically making it a rule-in modality. The appendix was visualized in 80% of MRI, and the sensitivity and specificity are both much better at 100% and 98% respectively. Just a brief word on MRI protocol recommendations. The ACR approves use of MRI in any trimester. A dedicated MRI protocol for a suspected appendicitis should include a generous field of view from the dome of the liver through the pubic symphysis, multiplanar T2 single shot fast spin echo, usually three planes, an axial true fast imaging with steady state precession, that's your FISP or Fiesta, depending on which uh, vendor you use, an axial in and out of phase T1, and an axial stir or T2 fat suppressed image. The primary goal is to give you the best chance at finding the appendix, evaluating for any adjacent fluid or stranding, and the field of view and sequences should be general enough to include other possible etiologies for pain in pregnant patients, cholecystitis, gallstones, polynephritis, bowel obstruction, ovarian torsion, and degenerating fibroid, for example. Contrast in general is not administered since gadolinium-based contrast agents have been shown to cross the placenta. To paraphrase the ACR Committee on Drugs and Contrast Media, gadolinium should only be administered after careful review of the radiology and clinical services and when there is potential to significantly benefit to the patient, which outweigh the possible but unknown risk of fetal exposure to free gadolinium ions. So in general, these are all going to be done without contrast. So the MRI findings of a normal appendix follow logically from what we know how it looks like on CT. Diameter is less than 6 millimeter. The wall is less than 2 millimeter. There should be low T1 and T2 signal in the appendiceal lumen, it's usually air, and there should be no T2 hyperintense periappendiceal fat stranding or fluid. So we're going to go through a couple of normal appendices on MRI, then a few abnormal appendices, just to kind of give you an idea of what these look like. So I don't want to downplay how tricky it can be to find a normal appendix on a pregnant patient. And generally, the later in pregnancy, the harder it's going to be. Then there's the issue of doing an MRI study on a patient with acute pain and the associated motion artifact for the patient, fetal motion artifact later on in the pregnancy, and in the teleradiology world, just a variety of imaging protocols and techniques that can be jarring if you're not used to them. So our first example here is a normal appendix in a pregnant patient at 16 weeks gestational age. Here on this T2 axial sequence, we see a normal retrocecal appendix. 
no adjacent fluid or stranding, low luminal signal, Here is the cine clip. Again, it's our T2 axial, which is generally the workhorse of this type of protocol. We see the normal appendix and the normal ovaries. On the coronals, the appendix is barely identifiable and really not without the axials. So again, I would stress three plain T2 imaging to maximize your chances of finding the appendix. Here's a blink and you miss it appendix, only seen on a single slice. Our second case of a normal appendix is later on, 34 weeks gestation. Here we see the appendix, again, retrocecal in location, but also much higher, much more superior in the patient as the appendix and cecum tend to move upward the later on in gestation. Nice thin appendix. And although there's some fluid in the lumen, there's no other adjacent inflammatory change or fluid to suggest appendicitis. Here's the axial T2 cine clip. showing a normal retrocecal appendix. Here's the coronal T2 series where you can see how much more superior the appendix is later on in the pregnancy. So moving on to an abnormal appendix. So the findings, again, follow logically from what we know what an abnormal appendix looks like on CT. The appendiceal diameter is greater than 7 millimeter. The appendiceal wall is greater than 2 millimeter. There is high T2 signal in the appendiceal contents, which is you know, generally fluid or edema. And there's T2 hyperintense peripendiceal fat stranding or fluid. Again, you're relying on your multiplanar T2 and T2 fat suppressed imaging, mostly to find the appendix and the adjacent inflammatory changes. So let's move on to some positive examples. Here's a first trimester patient with a thick walled, fluid filled and distended appendix with adjacent stranding and fluid. Here's the T2 axial clip showing the thickened retrocecal appendix with adjacent fluid. Just your classic look of acute appendicitis. Here's the T2 axial fat suppressed image, just bringing out that peripendiceal edema. Here's the full fat suppressed T2 clip. Our next case shows a T2-weighted image with right hydronephrosis and hydroureter. Right there is a big descended ureter, secondary to uterine compression in this late second trimester patient. As we go further down into the right lower quadrant, we see a thickened appendix. Here's the full axial clip. Right hydronephrosis, even with perinephric edema, right hydroureter, and the thickened appendix in the right lower quadrant. On coronals, we again see just how the appendix is deviated superiorly into the sort of right mid abdomen to right upper quadrant. The extent of the hydronephrosis is also better demonstrated. 
Another example of acute appendicitis in the second trimester, here we actually see a low T2 signal appendicular at the base of the appendix, with the remainder of the appendix fluid-filled and distended with adjacent edema. Another classic acute appendicitis. The axial cine clip of T2 weighted images. Here's our fat suppressed T2 weighted image. Coronal T2. All right, here's our last example of acute appendicitis. We see our, again, familiar right liver quadrant, fluid-filled tubular structure, compatible with an abnormal appendix. Here we see it laid out mostly on a single coronal image. Here's our T2 fat suppressed axial sequence. A 2017 paper published in BJR looked at interradiologist agreement and the significance of non-visualization of the appendix. They retrospectively reviewed 233 MRI scans performed for appendicitis in pregnancy and compared interradiologist agreement between two radiologists who were asked to rate them as positive, indeterminate, or negative. These scans were selected and reviewed by two radiologists, 14 of which were positive for acute appendicitis giving a prevalence of about 6%. The two readers compared were subspecialty trained with nine and seven years of experience respectively and from the same medical center. Here is their table for interradiologist agreement. Now what I find here to be most interesting is the relatively low correlation coefficient for visualization of the appendix with only a kappa coefficient of 0.274. But when all these categories are taken together, the correlation for the final impression is high, with a kappa value of 0.917. Both radiologists agreed on the final interpretation in 223 patients, 13 of which were positive, 3 were considered indeterminate, and 207 were negative. In 10 patients, one radiologist interpreted the study as indeterminate, while the other interpreted it as negative. But a single patient where one radiologist interpreted the study as positive, with the other calling it indeterminate. The best agreement for a single variable was for periappendiceal soft tissue stranding with a kappa coefficient of 0 0.861. So again, the issue here is non-visualization. In 73 patients, the appendix could not be visualized by either radiologist, 31.3%, quite high. None of these patients had signs of right liver quadrant inflammation and all were negative for acute appendicitis. Of the 14 patients interpreted as indeterminate by either radiologist or on the original MRI interpretation, all were negative for acute appendicitis. So to conclude and recap, MRI is a test of choice for evaluation of acute appendicitis in pregnancy. Multiplanar T2-weighted sequences are the workhorse in diagnosing acute appendicitis, and a fat transferated sequence in at least one plane should also be included. While one may not always visualize the appendix, the presence or absence of secondary findings can increase confidence in diagnosing or excluding acute appendicitis. Here are some references for further reading. Thanks again for watching.